presentation or just read it like this? Presentation. Yeah, probably. Okay. Critical Lens Theory for I Stand Here Ironing by Ginny Price, Colby Lawson, Chase Young, and Randy Gonzalez. Marxism. Marxism is a Marxist critic grounds theory and practice on the economic and cultural theory of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Engels. Examples of Marxism. The evolving history of humanity, its institution and ways of thinking. History changes in the fundamental mode of production effects, essential changes both in the constitution and power relations of social classes. Human consciousness in any era is constituted by an ideology that is a set of concepts, beliefs, values, and ways of thinking and feeling through which human beings perceive and by which they explain what they take to be reality. The narrator's opening line, I stand here ironing, is a phrase continually repeated that depicts the responsibility she takes on as a mother. Specifically, she raises her firstborn. In addition, the author includes the detail of the mother nursing her children as instructed by a book. The quote states, I nursed all the children, but with her, with all the fierce rigidity of first motherhood, I did like the books then said. This indicates her placement in the lower class of society. It is more common for people to hire a maid to do the ironing and a midwife to assist in childbirth and ease them into motherhood. However, these luxuries cost money, much more money than this mother seemed to have. It can be assumed that she is not a wealthy member of society, nor does she fit into the typical perception of a mother. I was 19. It was the pre-relief, pre-WPA world of depression. By the author mentioning the depression, it helps explain why raising Emily was so difficult. In addition, mentioning it emphasizes how different Emily's mother's problems would be if there wasn't one. Obviously, it would still be difficult to raise a child on her own. However, once the depression subsided, Emily's mother was able to take care of three other children without as much difficulty. This shows how the mother is in a lower class, but struggled a lot, especially during this time. I think the author's purpose of including the depression is to show how bad Emily's mother's hardships were and how this mentally affected Emily. They persuaded me at the clinic to send her away to a convalescent home in the country. The author is showing here how there were conflicts between the lower and upper class during this time. The social worker is convincing a person in lower class to send their child to a clinic run by upper class people. This clinic still provided people with mush with lumps for food, even when they had enough money to give them decent food. This just shows how the upper class was continuing to use the lower class to better their image and make them seem like nice, decent people, when in actuality, they're just using them to make more money for themselves. This shows how Emily's mother is a part of the lower class that is being used by the upper class to make more money, which they pretend they are using to help poor people. However, they're actually pocketing it. You should smile at Emily more when you look at her. This quote shows how the narrator is unconsciously punishing Emily for the intense burden of motherhood. This burden is economic, as she says, I loved her. This shows us that despite her love for her child, she was still under extreme pressure from having to work all the time in order to provide for Emily. This pressure came forth in an unconscious response of not smiling towards Emily. This unconscious action by the narrator reveals her secret feelings for Emily. This shows that despite the narrator's love for Emily, she still feels the pressure of single motherhood as she must surrender for her personal success for Emily's. There was a boy she loved painfully through two school semesters. Ligris was his favorite, and I bought some for him every day, but he still liked Jennifer better than me. Here, the author describes how Emily expressed her love for a boy by buying him snacks. This is innocent enough until we fully analyze her relationship with her mother. As the narrator describes it, Emily would often be left with a neighbor, sent to a convalescent home, or sent to a school. This shows us that Emily's mother had to sacrifice more conventional forms 
of expressing her love for Emily in order to provide enough money for Emily. Thus, when we look back at the quote, we can see how Emily would have begun to associate money and providing for someone as an adequate way to express her love for someone else. This quote thus shows us how Emily and her mother had to suffer from poverty as the narrator sacrificed raising Emily in order to pay the bills, and Emily suffered from the lack of motherly love. I used to try to hold and love her after she came back, but her body would stay stiff. Society portrays the convalescent homes to be a place of rehabilitation and nature, nurture. Yet when Emily came back, she acted like what they did there was quite the opposite. This quote shows us how Emily's emotions changed drastically after being at the convalescent home for eight months. To further prove that the convalescent homes aren't what society portrays them to be, Emily says they had runny eggs for breakfast or mush with lumps. She then goes on to say how she would, quote unquote, hold it in her mouth and not swallow. The author says that she lost seven pounds. This shows that the convalescent home did not take as good care for her as everyone once thought. Emily's mom says, quote, after a while, she pushed away. The effect that the convalescent home had on Emily has made her stiff and emotionless. A connection to a contemporary matter. Emily, a child of a teen mother, is not unordinary today. Roughly 12 million girls between the age of 15 and 19 years old give birth each year. Of these, they are more likely to occur in the lower classes of society where poverty, lack of education, and poor employment Opportunities are, opportunities are prominent. As a result, children of teen moms are often left without a steady source of income or proper education. The education can relate to academics or other basic life skills that are ap applicable to motherhood. Furthermore, young mothers are at a significant disadvantage both financially and socially. They are not seen as equals amongst the community, nor are they respected. They have little power over their lives due to their young age and have difficulty maintaining the lives of their newborn children. Work cited. I stand here ironing by Tilly Olson, Little Red Riding Hood, a critical theory approach, critical lens theory explained, who on adolescent pregnancy.